Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today we're going to be taking a look at this vintage device called an electrical read frequency meter. And it's basically a device for measuring electrical frequency. We're going to be taking a look at this device, seeing how it works, and trying to get it to work again. Let's get started. All right, so this right here is the device we are looking at. It's an electrical read frequency meter. If you look on the back, it actually says that it's the electrical frequency meter, and it's pretty old. It's actually meant to go in an airplane, and as you can see, it is the property of the USA Air Force. But I bought this in an electronics supplier store that has some surplus military technology at it for a very cheap price. I got this thing for probably about $4. Now this thing actually went in airplanes and it was used to measure the frequency of the airplane's alternating current system. So in the USA, we're used to having 110 volts AC at 60 hertz. In the UK, you have 240 volts at uh, 50 hertz. But on airplanes, they have a little bit different of a story. On airplanes, they use a frequency of approximately 400 hertz. Now the reason that airplanes use 400 hertz as opposed to 60 hertz for their electrical system is because they can have smaller power supplies. If you look at this transformer right here, it is rather bulky and it's meant for 60 hertz and because of that frequency property it needs to be a bigger transformer. But if you have a higher frequency then your transformer can get smaller and it can still transfer the same amount of power. And so because airplanes need to conserve all the amount of weight they can, then airplanes switch over to a higher frequency of electrical uh, thing. And so if you have 400 hertz power supplies on an airplane, it allows the plane to be lighter and still fly, whereas if you have a 60 hertz transformer, it allows the plane to be heavier and crash to the ground. And this device was put inside the cockpit of an airplane, and it was used to make sure that the airplane had a frequency that was exactly at 400 hertz. All right, so now let's take a look at how this vibrating read frequency counter works. So it basically works off the same principle as a tuning fork. So you have this large fork, and you can see that there are five little prongs inside there. And the fork is made of five prongs of varying lengths. Now under this tuned tuning fork that's inside the vibrating read frequency meter, we have a coil, and this coil is basically an electromagnet like a relay but is hooked up directly to the electrical grid and allows for a fluctuating magnetic field to be created. Now that fluctuating magnetic field vibrates this entire tuning fork. Now what, an interesting thing about tuning forks like the things that are used to tune a piano are that they have certain resonant frequencies. Just like any string on any instrument, they have a resonant frequency. And the resonant frequencies change. So as you can see, we have the resonant frequency of the middle one as 400 hertz, which is the ideal frequency. And then on each end, we have 420 hertz and 380 hertz. So the uh, larger one would be 420, and the smaller one would be 380. And so what's going to happen basically is if this tuning fork is vibrating at 400 hertz, of course all these reeds are going to vibrate because they will. But the one that will vibrate the most is the one in the middle. It's basically like a bell curve. All of them will vibrate, but the one that is tuned to the resonant frequency of the frequency that it's being vibrated at will vibrate the most because it'll self-amplify itself. And the same goes if the frequency was 420 hertz, it would, that one would be vibrating the most and not these ones, and same if it was 380 Hz. So that's basically how this device works. Now I kind of want to see this device running in action. So I think it's time we devise a circuit to do so. Now to get my 420 Hz, I'm going to be using my trusty frequency generator. And so we'll fire that thing up. Then we're going to change the frequency to 400. Then we can fine tune that to see the effect on the different forks. Now we're then going to take this cable going from channel 1 and we're going to use this to drive an audio amplifier. Now I cannot directly drive this device from the function generator. This thing has an extremely high impedance. This thing has an impedance of uh, 6k ohms and it needs 125 volts to run 
And we don't have 125 volts at a certain frequency, and my frequency generator cannot supply that. So we're going to do the next best thing, and use something called impedance matching, and use an amplifier. So we're going to have this miniature amplifier that I actually took from a Dell speaker, and this miniature amplifier is what's going to be driving this miniature audio transformer. This audio transformer has an input of 8 ohms, like a speaker, and it has an output of 2500 ohms. And you can see right here, it's the 71 volts output, 26 volts input, or 1.26 volts input. So as you can see, this thing has a very large increase in uh, voltage. And so it'll be able to match the low impedance of this audio driver to the high impedance of this. It's kind of funny because this is the opposite that most uh, audio drivers need because it's usually high to low impedance and here we're doing low to high impedance. So basically we're going to wire this up where we have the uh, audio coming into here from the function generator. We have ground, we have uh, 5 volts, and then we have our output to the speaker, which is going to be going to the uh, little transformer, and that's going to be going out to this device. So this is the entire setup. Well, set up. As you can see, I've got the uh, vibrating reed frequency meter. I have the uh, step up transformer. I have the audio amplifier, and I have all the alligator clips connecting everything together. And then I've got my power supply set to five volts. So let's turn this on and see what we can get. So far, nothing. Is it not working? Well, this is odd indeed. As you can see, when I connect up my multimeter to the output, on AC we're getting a little over one volt, maybe a little under one volt. That's not right. So if I perhaps desolder one of these connections, will that voltage rise? That is the question. Let's see now. It's been desoldered. What will happen? Wow, at three volts. Still one volt. What is this deal? If I turn up the input voltage, still that lame voltage right there. What is the deal here? Alrighty. So as you can see, I have it hooked up to a speaker instead of that trashy audio transformer. As you can see, when I turn up the voltage on my function generator, we see something happen. You see that it's actually working. If I turn up the frequency, all right, this leads me to believe that this audio transformer was at fault for the issues. So it leads me to believe that this one may be better. So let's wire in this audio transformer to the device and see if we can get some more promising results. Alright, this is the new setup, and I think things are going to work pretty well. So I've got the big audio transformer, the little amplifier, and the device. Everything's all hooked up. So let's take a look at this when we turn it on 400 Hz. Alright, here we go. This is an up-close view of the frequency device. Now let me show you what happens when we set it to on. Okay, now you may not be able to see this because I'm not sure if the camera's frame rate will allow you to, but if I, you can see that the middle 400 is moving, and if I turn it down a little bit, you can see that the other ones start moving too. Let's see if I can fine tune these in. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. 400's resonant frequency is 404. That is crazy. Look how much that one's vibrating. Holy crap. Oh, it's four off. Look, you can even hear it. That's loud.
To be honest, I did not expect that to work so well. Each of them have to be dialed in. Check that one out. You can totally see how it's vibrating. You can see that that one's resonant frequency is 382. Well, that's pretty cool. Well, I did not expect that to go so well. So after I was able to see that this audio transformer needed to be replaced and that everything else was fixed, I was able to get this thing working really well. And I think the issue before with this thing is that I had to dial in the frequency because the flat frequencies like 380 and 400 and 420 weren't the exact ones. It had to be slightly calibrated. So 403.5 was the resonant frequency for each one. So I think this is a pretty cool lesson in resonant frequencies of tuning forks because I could directly adjust the resonant frequency to see when it would vibrate the best. So I just think this is an awesome experiment. It's so cool how someone in the ancient days was able to devise a device such as this that was able to measure the resonant frequency of the alternating current inside the airplane electrical system because if your frequency in your airplane electrical system fails that means something's wrong with the engine or the power unit. Well anyway, thanks for watching. I had a lot of fun making this video but my camera is about dead so there's no more video for this. As always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.